today I want to share with you how to make this really simple box. Now, this simple box you can make in about 15, 20 minutes if you don't count the time that you have to wait for the glue to dry. And it's really easy to make. It's a square box. It has miter corners and it has a lid with rabbits that it just sits inside the box. And this is the same concept you can use, not just for boxes, but you can make it into tissue boxes. You know, if you don't use the lid and you turn it upside down and you make a circle over there or an oval to get your tissues out, this could be a great tissue box cover. It could be a pencil holder. It could be whatever you want it to be. Today, I made it into a box. We're going back to basics and I'm gonna show you how to make this really, really easy. Now for the lumber I'll be using today, I'll be using two of these cherry boards that I have left over from a different project. And if you're curious, I bought these cherry boards on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description below. When you get them, you get them like this. It's a half inch thick and is six inches wide and 24 inches long. So this is what I purchased on Amazon. And then I used part of it for a project and now I have two boards left over. This one's, I'm not sure what the dimensions is because I told you we're not gonna measure, but it's about five inches left on this, guys. Uh, if you're looking for a cheaper alternative that is really, really good on Amazon, I also found these walnut boards. These guys are wider. They're eight inches wide, half inch thick, and 24 inches long. And these are fantastic for projects like tissue box covers and stuff. They're cheap, they're about $89 for 10 boards, so it gets at around $9 per board. And I used a whole bunch of them to make all kinds of tissue box covers, like this one you'll see here. This is those boards I used that it was $9 per board. And you see it makes really cool uh, tissue box covers. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see how to make this cover. But anyway, cheap boards on Amazon for projects like this. Now we'll be doing this project here at the table saw. I have a table saw sled, so I'll be using this. If you don't have a sled, you can just use your mother gauge. And then I put my blade at 45 degrees and uh, because we'll be cutting miters at 45 degrees angle. And then um, I use this digital angler to make sure my blade was exactly at 45 degrees. And to, like I said, we will do no measuring so I know my box is going to be square. That means the length of my boards cannot be longer than the width of the board. So I'm going to kind of put my width of the board over here and then move it a little bit over the blade so I can make sure that I am shorter than the width of my board. I'll put a stop block and I will clamp it in place. There you go. So we have a stop block the distance it's shorter than my board now that we, now that we have the stop block in place uh, it's time to cut our boards first I'll be trimming the very end of my board so that's what I will do now And now once I trim the very end of my board, what I will be doing is I'll be flipping my board. So you see it was like this on the table. So I'll be flipping it upside down and I will make another cut. Then I will flip it again, put it in the same place and, and take another cut. And I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna use both boards until I get uh, five pieces. So I need to cut five pieces like this. Make a cut, flip it over, make a cut, flip it over. Now we have our five pieces. They look something like this. If you look at each piece, they have two sides that are cut miters at 45 degrees and two straight edges. So now with our five pieces, we need to cut another bevel on one more side. So three of the sides will have 45 degrees angle. 
to do that let's see i am going to i'll put it with the short sides down on the sled something like this and i will cut another um, bevel on that side i'll do that with all five pieces Now the second cut, not only that they put a third bevel on our block, but also ensure that our block is square because we use the same stop block and we cut it one way, then flipped it over and cut it the other way. So now we should have a perfectly square block. Here's a little tip for you. If you're making a very small box and you are getting your, to have to keep your hands very close to the blade because you do not have a clamp, you can use a little scrap wood and what I did is I glued some sandpaper on the back of it on the very bottom and then you can use this to hold your piece and this will hold it has a good grip on it and it will hold it securely so you don't have to put your fingers this close to the blade. This is as close as I've ever got my hands to the blade. I should have used this but I didn't so learn from my mistakes. Now I forgot to mention in the beginning, I already pre-sanded my boards before I cut them and I found that it's so much easier to send one long board than having to send small tiles separately. So send your block before and then, you know, makes it a lot faster and easier. Now it's time for the glue up. We have our five pieces. Let's kind of arrange and see which way we like our grain direction to go. You know, make sure it has kind of a nice flow. Now, this is not one of those perfect uh, grain flow boxes. If you want to learn how to make that, let me know in the comments below and I will show you how to make those. But for this one, we just wanted to make sure that it kind of goes together. So I think that kind of looks nice. Let's see. Maybe this one goes in here. Yeah. I'll put it there and then. So those will be our four sides. All right. We'll start taping this together. So I'm going to use just blue tape and put it on my first piece of wood and kind of push the second one in, make sure it lines up and kind of stretch the blue tape over it it kind of creates a clamp in there then we'll go to the next one then we carefully flip it over and we'll add the glue now i like to keep some of these wipes on hand those are fantastic for the shop they never get dry and you know when you work with glue you need something to wipe your hands on so i'll get this ready over here i'll be using tight tight bond three this is what i use and i'll put some glue onto the edges and then carefully we will fold our box you can wipe the glue up as you go makes it a little bit easier I'm getting a piece of tape for the last one. Hold on, my hands are wet and I got the tape all wet and it wasn't sticking. There you go. All right, so, so far, our miters are looking great. Let me show you really quick. This is what our miters look like. They close nicely. 
So this is going to be our top where it has the flat top and then we have this bevel edge that we need to glue our bottom piece in there. And you know what you guys, for the bottom piece we need to make one more bevel cut on this side so all four sides then will just sink in here. I forgot to do that so I'm going to take this back to the table slot and add one more 45 degree angle cut on this angle over here. So I cut our last angle and unfortunately I got a little bit of tear out over there. Um, I should have put some blue tape, that's a trick. If you add some blue tape, tape before you cut it, you will not get any tear out. Let me see what it looks like. Unfortunately, I think I, you see if I put this in here, you can still see it a little bit in there. So I'm going to quickly cut another piece to replace that bottom piece. All right, so I cut a different bottom for it. I did not use blue tape, I just cut it and got lucky it didn't chip out, so I'll be using this one. I'll be putting glue on all four sides. And now that I put glue on all four sides, I will just drop it into my box. Just Let's see which way the grain direction goes. It doesn't really matter. I'll do it like this. Perfect fit. Now for clamping, you could use one of those strap clamps. I do use those sometimes, but for small projects like this, I'll just use some rubber bands. So there goes one, there goes another. And then to hold the bottom in place, I will place a clamp or two or three. Now we will let it dry for a couple of hours and then we'll come back and make the lid. Now it's time to give our box the last uh, sanding. For that, the, be the best way to sand your box is to use a scrap piece of plywood and stick some sandpaper on it. I like to use this 3M um, sanding paper. It comes in this rose and this is 120 grit and it already has sticky back so you can just you know roll it up and stick it on your piece of uh, wood. So what you want to do is to take your box and rub it on your sandpaper on your piece of plywood. Make sure you secure it with some clamps. And that's the way you want to sand your um, box. Because if you just take a hand sander, let's see, or an orbital sander, and you try to sand it, without you even realizing it, you are going to round out the corners because you will be putting different pressure um, along the box. So in order to keep those crisp edges that we just created, you want to just rub your box onto the sandpaper on your plywood. So that's what I will be doing. I won't spend too much time on it. Just give it a couple of swipes uh, just so we can get on with this project and make the lid. Now another thing I like to do is to break out these really really sharp edges and for that I'll just be using this 3M um, extra fine sponges. I love using the sponges for this and just break the very sharp corners. We still have nice miters but it's just you know will look better and feel better to touch. And now we still have sharp corners it's just you know feels a lot better to the hand. Now it's time to make the lid. For the lid, because remember I told you I'm not going to measure, I could you know, use a tape measure and measure what kind of square we need here, but I'll just be, you know, using the box itself and I'm gonna overshoot it. I'm gonna cut it a little bit bigger than the box. So I made a mark and I'm gonna go cut this at the table saw. I cut the lid to the size of the box and I did that by just, you know, roughly cutting one piece first, test it, then sneak up on it, keep cutting little slices until you get to a perfect fit. So that's what I did here. And now it's time to cut a rabbit into this lid so it sits on the box. To do that, first I will need to add a sacrificial fence to my um, table saw. And for that, I'll just use this uh, one by four poplar. I put two drill holes in it. And that will allow me to attach this sacrificial fence to my real fence with these little fence clamps. I'll put those in the description below too if you are looking to get something like this. And I'll just clamp it in place. And we want to use a sacrificial 
uh, fans when we do rabbit because there is a chance that we might run our blade into the fence and if it's wood then there is no problem you don't want to run it into your metal fence all right that's good enough let me change your position here so what i will be doing now is i will be lowering my blade because i don't want to cut the whole lid off i just want to cut the rabbit on it and I don't want to go too deep. Something like that will be all right. And now I'll move my sacrificial fence until it touches the blade, just like that. Lock it in place. And what I need to do now, it's run all four sides through the blade and that will cut that small part of the lid and then I'll move the fence just an eighth of an inch more further away from the blade, run all four sides again, and so on. And I'll keep testing it to see when it fits on my box. So that's what I'll be doing now. Now, this is a pretty snug fit, but that's okay because we have to send it a little bit too. So, you know, this is what it looks like with the lid on. And we'll have to send it because we got some burn marks. Now it's time to apply the finish. For the finish, I will be using Osmo. I absolutely love this finish for boxes. First, I will give it a good stir. And I'll be applying this with these 3M white pads like this. I'm just going to cut a small piece. And I'm going to apply the oil to my box. And this is really easy. We can start seeing the beautiful warm tones in the cherry. Now, I could have sanded this some more and make it a little bit better looking, but the reality is I'm not going to use the lid for this box. This box is just going to be a pencil holder for my daughter. So that was the purpose of making this, and then I figured I will show you guys how to make it into a box. Because nobody wants to watch videos on how to make a pencil holder, I guess. So, box it is. Also, make sure you get the lid too. I almost forgot about it. I will finish the lid just so I can show it in the thumbnail, but like I said, I'm not going to use it. First I use one rag to just kind of get the bulk of the oil off. Then I like to take my gloves off and make sure I rub everything else off. Now, when you use finishes, make sure you don't throw these uh, paper towels into the garbage because some finishes like linseed oil they are self-combustible and you can pretty much burn your shop or your house down so dispose properly of them i have a one of those red containers that are meant for to be fireproof and what i do while i'm in the shop and working on other projects i just throw them on the floor and let them air dry and then i put them into the red bucket and overnight i actually put them on the middle of my driveway and leave it there in the bucket just in case they do start a fire and then the next day uh when they're completely dry i will throw them into the trash but i do not leave them in my shop especially overnight i do not leave them in the garage i try to be cautious because you just never know and it's been many cases where people have their houses burned down because they dispo dispose of their uh, rags with the finishes like i said mostly linseed oil i think that's the most dangerous one and there is our box